اللهم صل على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد ان شاء الله في فايف مينتس از ويل ذا فيرسز ذات وي ريسايدد فروم سوره النجم اند وي انديرستاند ذات سوره النجم از ا ماكين سوره اند ات سبيكس اباوت ذا عقيده هاو الله سبحانه وتعالى تو ذا بروفيس الله عليه وسلم اندسندد انتو ذا هيفنز اند ذات از ذا معراج سو اسراء از ذا جيني باي نايت اند سوره الاسراء سبيكس اباوت ذات the journey where the Prophet ﷺ traveled from Mecca to uh, Palestine uh, and he covered the journey uh, under a few, under a few uh, minutes. And we understand that that brought about the doubt in the uh, truthfulness of the Prophet ﷺ. When the mushrikeen started uh, making uh, you know, accusations that he is a liar and he's making up stories, So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed down Surah Al-Isra, Subhanahu al-Ladhi Asra li'abidi Affirming and confirming to the journey by night that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam undertook But there was another doubt How did he ascend to the heavens? So Surah Al-Najm came down and he speaks about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ascended or took the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Masjid Al-Aqsa to the seventh heaven but what we wanted to concentrate on is one verse. Towards the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the action of a human being. So mushrikeen, you are doubting that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not travel to Masjid al-Aqsa. You are doubting that he did not ascend to the heavens. To an extent that they wanted to make this, to use this as a tool, an element, to instill doubts in the aqidah of Sahaba. And they went to the first, the first one of them, Abu Bakr And they said, how can you believe someone telling you, and you know, those, there was a time before they invented all these planes and the fast you know, mode of transport. They were traveling by you know, donkeys and camels and horses. How can you believe the journey that takes us two months, someone covering the journey with you know, a split of seconds or in, in hours or in minutes? And Abu Bakr before he could hear the entire narrative from the Prophet Sallallahu he first heard it from the Mushrikeen. Uh, people that come and want to cast doubts in your aqidah. But he did not hesitate. He said, no, no. If he has said it, in kana qad qadaha faqad sadaq. If you say this is spoken by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have no atom of doubt, I believe in it. And they all are shocked. We thought you are men of intellect. You are a logical person. What is your logic? Have you lost it? He says, no. I believe in him in something greater than that. He tells me that revelation comes to him in split of seconds from above the heavens. If I believe in that, what more traveling and coming back and that, that's nothing for me. So towards the end of the surah, you are doubting in the, uh, you know, in what the Prophet Sallallahu is telling you. Don't you see the lifestyle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He lives a noble life, dignified human being. He does not hurt anyone. He prays to one Allah and he will reap the reward of it. What have you done? You are counting your, on your ancestors. So Allah says, وَأَلَّيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَسَاهِ A human being will reap what he has done for himself. You cannot, uh, you know, build up your, you know, your aspirations on someone else's, uh, you know, someone else's sacrifices. Because your father is a successful person. So you think you must relax. Because my parents are practicing. So they are going to, uh, they are going to intercede on my behalf. A human being will reap what he has done. 
and according to Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, he uses this verse that when a person dies, even Quran will not reach him. The recitation of someone else's will not reach him. Why? He did not physically acquire for this action. So Allah, if Allah is going to reward a person based on his sacrifices, these are not his sacrifices. So number one, we should always make sure that we are taking enough actions for us to be able to reap the reward of it on Judgment Day. People that we leave behind, whether they are children, spouses or wives, family members, they will mourn and cry. They will mourn and cry. But just like how we see an accident without any bad feelings to the brothers that have met an accident before. But when an accident happens, it's a lesson for all of us. The traffic will stop, the paramedics will come, the cops will come, they'll block the road, but for how long? How long? A few minutes. Once the road is cleared and everyone, then the traffic moves normally. Normality of traffic begins. So our beloved will mourn over our demise, but for how long? then they will forget about us. Apply it on ourselves. We have grandparents that have passed on. May Allah forgive them and grant them Jannah. Maybe parents also. Maybe friends. Do we really make dua for them every single day? Do we do a hajj on their behalf? Now that hajj is so expensive, leave alone Umrah. How many people make it a point on a daily basis to make dua for those who have passed on? And how are you going to cover up that list? So this is our time to accumulate good deeds. Number two. Number two. These actions that we do, these actions that we do on Judgment Day, they will haunt us, especially the bad actions. The bad actions will haunt us. So we have to understand when a sin becomes attractive to us, that sin will become a burden in this life, in Qadr and in Akhirah. I don't want to speak about how sins will affect us in our, in our you know, uh, in a worldly life or in the graves. But on Judgment Day, a sin will become a burden for people. When a person will see his actions, his sins on Judgment Day, he will be so embarrassed and he will wish if these sins were distanced away from him and there was a gate between him and these actions. Why? So people don't, they don't assume they are affiliated to me. They are my sins. They will wish if there is a gap between him and that sin. Embarrassment. People that are tested with desires. These haram desires. Allah will bless the private part of the opposite gender on the forehead. While others, they will have nur on their forehead. And the nur will shine for them as they walk past the sirat for these people because of fornication, na'udhu billah. The private part of the opposite gender will be on their foreheads. And they will be recognized by this. People will know. Those are mutakabbirin, those who are arrogant and haughty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put a sign on them and Allah will shrink them. Allah will shrink the size and they will go in the size of a nanu, an ant, and people will be tramping over them. The sin. And what is worse than that? 
فهم يحملون أوزارهم على ظهورهم people will be carrying the sins on judgment day on day on their backs ويحملون أوزارهم وأوزار الذين يضلونهم بغير علم and those who are instigating sins and vices and pushing people to do haram they will carry their own sins and the sins of those who they push towards haram Allah last night I saw a scary dream I saw some people that I know all of them gathered and they were struggling to carry the Lord and I wanted to share this for myself first and foremost and for everyone I saw them lining up some of them have heaps and heaps of Lord that they can't carry and they're asking for help May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive one and all